I wanted to uh, conclude this by uh, talking about some strategies that we've seen at institutions for navigating you know, the waters that we just went through. And, and again, I wanted to do it in the, the context of, of this graph. You know, we talked about, uh, about space, that people are, are taking a critical look at, at you know, making sure that they're getting the most out of the, out of the space that they have about allocating capital in the best way and then having those to drive operations rather than the other way around. I want to talk about um, you know, five different broad strategies that we've observed at institutions um, that are helping them move the bar forward. Well, thanks, Jay. Um, let's go at kind of these five strategies one by one. Um, the first one is built strategically. Um, today's facility challenge really require multiple strategies to make a difference. Since the 1990s, institutions really relied on big one-time infusions of capital as a replacement for recurring capital sources. But as a result of the, the recession, we're seeing overall capital funding decreasing. And so the money available for renewal projects is not always there when you need it. And so campuses have been turning, and as we showed in the data, to annual capital to fill the gap. So that means thinking differently about investment strategies because you're not always going to have the resources just when you think you're going to have the resources. So finding a regular source of funding and then being able to use that one-time funding strategically to deal with the biggest problem is very important. A second strategy of seeing successful is less can be more. Um, as we pointed out in our data and many other reports that have been done on deferred maintenance and backlog, a lot of doom and glooms out there and there's no sugarcoating it. The numbers are high and on many campuses the situation is critical and the resources are not there. The problem is that the old strategies of renovating buildings in turn are no longer going to work. Campuses are going to run out of money before they run out of buildings. And so picking the right projects is critical. I showed earlier a chart that defined critical deferred maintenance. And many of the, in many campuses, though, it's between 8 and 12 percent of the projects that are affecting the reliability and the functioning of the building. Being able to identify those projects and making them a priority is vital if we're going to be able to be successful with, the, with fewer resources. It's also critical to make sure that any investment in new space either replaces old space that's worn out or is critical to supporting the long-term institutional mission where you're serving the highest number of students. A third strategy, look ahead. Um, a simple analysis of age really tells you the story, right? We've not been able to look ahead but we do know that life cycles of major building components are predictable. We have models built into our rope, a model that actually does be able to predict when life cycles are coming due and really be able to predict those life cycles, look ahead when they're going to come due, and take develop strategies that create a balanced age profile where the capital needs can be distributed over the years, uh, over a number of years. One of the biggest problems is if you have a lot of concentration of space in any one age category, it's all just coming due at the same time. And so being able to balance that and have a balanced age profile and look ahead and be able to project when things are going to happen and allocate resources properly is an important step. Fourth strategy, keep up. Um, if anybody who's worked with sidelines knows, we talk about annual stewardship and the importance of keeping up. That is regularly investing capital to meet life cycles on an annual basis. And we call this annual stewardship. We found that through our 14 years in business, that a dollar invested annually can actually help you avoid three to four dollars in costs later. There is a cost of waiting to address deferred maintenance issues, and it's often three or four times the cost of doing it now. And so being able to invest on a regular basis is important. Finally, the last strategy is reward savings. Um, I think it makes sense to assume that operating budgets are going to be flat. Um, we're not and we're at a time of uncertain enrollment in financial health, and CFOs really want to control the operating budget uh, that's spent on the physical assets. And so we need to think about how to reallocate time and resources and create policies that incentivize operators to be more proactive and more strategic, as we showed in some of the examples. Every, even 50 cents to a dollar in operating budget savings recycled the plan of preventive maintenance can really have a multiplier effect on the campus appearance and the efficiency of the campus. We also talked a little about energy. I think there's still, we, we've made some progress on the energy front, but I think there's still plenty of opportunities to reduce energy consumption 
But one of the things we're hearing from presidents and CFOs is show me projects that not only reduce energy, but also have a multiplier effect of addressing some of the deferred maintenance like HVAC systems and upgrading utility plants and underground piping. And so um, you, CFOs are looking for return on investment on those energy projects. The bottom line on all of these is when we look at them across the board, we know that operating practices combined with strategic capital investment and better space policies is really a winning combination. Jay? Wonderful, Jim. Thank you. Uh, we're just at, at uh, about at the end of our uh, one hour here. Um, I'm glad to say that we did manage to answer the vast majority of the questions that were emailed in uh, during uh, the hour. Uh, before we conclude, I did want to uh, mention a couple of things. First of all, um, all of this material and then some is detailed in the article, which you can download on our public website for free. Um, but also, there are ways that you can stay in touch with us more regularly and, and hear more detail about the specific issues. You can sign up uh, right on our website for our monthly newsletter if you haven't already. And then we, we spent a lot of time blogging um, about case studies, best practices, success stories, and all kinds of issues um, at least monthly, sometimes every week. We can have those automatically sent your way as well if you uh, subscribe uh, to our blog or if you friend us on LinkedIn. Um, with that, um, thank you very much for participating today.